Hi, I'm Bill Shaver, the Radiator Guy. I'm going to show you the top three selling units in the U.S. from the top four selling manufacturers in North America. We're going to go inside a radiator. We're going to go ahead and show you the tubes, the tank, the cooler, the gasket. We're going to show you and let you compare for yourself how the units are built and what you actually want to be purchasing for the end installer. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this case. Bam! We're going to start off with brand SP. And when you open it up, you're going to see inside there has a 25.4 millimeter concentric cooler. This cools the transmission. You're going to notice it has a 24 millimeter tube inside there. Both these are good sized units. 25.4, 24 millimeter tube. Has a half moon gasket. The half moon gasket's round on one side and flat on the other side. Then you get this little kit, building block, little toys, and you go ahead and take all these components out and you assemble it on the unit. Once you're assembled on the unit, you can then go ahead and install it inside the car. So, get this little Christmas present. On the AP unit, you're going to notice the first thing is it's got a 19 millimeter concentric cooler inside there. Not a 25.4, but 19 millimeter. And it has a 20 millimeter tube, not a 24 millimeter tube. It also has a B tube, where you can see in the center of the tube it has a construction to support it, because this tube is thinner than your standard wall tube. So we went from a 24 to a 20, a 25.4 to a 19 millimeter. On brand VP, you're going to notice that they've gone to a 19 millimeter too. Also, if you look very carefully, you're going to see that it looks like the whole unit has shrunk. And when we go ahead and hold it up to you, you're going to notice the first thing you're going to notice is it has. So whatever you do, be very careful. Don't add any hot liquids to this unit. Shrinkage may occur. You get into the core and you're going to notice it's a 14 millimeter tube. Not a 20, not a 24, but 14 millimeter. So it's even smaller than the other two units. And you're going to notice that it uses this little oval gasket. When you get into the OSC unit, BAM! 28 millimeter concentric cooler tube inside there. You're going to notice, not 25, 19, 28 millimeter. So that's really going to cool your transmission. You got a 26 millimeter tube compared to a 24, 20, or 14. So if it's going to Death Valley, don't worry about it. Pack your kids and your wife up, off you go. You also have a die cut gasket. The difference between all these gaskets, oval, o-ring, or half moon, is with a die cut flat gasket, it's touching 100% of the surface. Your tank and your core itself. So you get a max amount of cooling. Now we're gonna go ahead and take you into a little large unit and show you the 4.3 S10s, 5.7 Yukon Tahoes and we're going to show you inside the units and show you where they change the coolers or cut back on the coolers where your customer, the end user, is not getting what they paid for. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into the 4.3 S10 unit. We're going to dive right in there and let you see what's inside the unit. So we're going to talk a little bit about the engine oil coolers right out of the gate. First thing we're going to do is show you the OSC unit. We're going to show you that it has a four plate stainless steel cooler in there. That's what came on the original unit, so that's what we're going to put back in it. So we meet or exceed the needs of the original equipment unit. You're also going to notice that we use the GM style original power nut. It's a tension spring and allows it to seat and keep the from different levels of temperature hot to cold and keep pressure on that gasket. We've also torqued it in position and marked it. It's kind of an old fashioned thought from the 60s and 70s as they used to mark the fittings on the cars as they came through, but we went ahead and did that, let the technician know the job's been done properly. Now on the VP brand, it's not a four plate, it's not a three plate, it's a two plate cooler. So it has half the cooling of the OE original unit and you're going to notice that they did a GM power nut on the outside but they put a washer underneath it for whatever reason. They don't mark it, let you know what it is. So if it's torqued in position or not, you just have to assume that everything's done correctly. On the economy brand, you're going to notice that they went to an aluminum concentric cooler inside there. Well, the aluminum concentric cooler is, depending on the size, is either one to one and a half plates of the stainless steel. So it's even less. It's not the four plate, it's not a two plate, 
it's probably a plate and a half worth of cooling. So original four plate, two plate, one plate. Now when you get into the cores themselves, what's very important, one very important fact, and you gotta always remember this, is that you wanna have a ribbed header plate. You don't want flexing. If you get flexing in that header plate, you're gonna have tank to header plate, gasket seepage. So what do we see here? The OSC unit's ribbed, the DP unit isn't, and the economy unit isn't. So let's go ahead and dive into the 1693 and see what changes the suppliers have made into those units. Now that you're getting the picture, we saved the best for last. We've got your 5.7, your Tahoe, your Yukon, your Escalade, your CK series. This is the engine oil cooler side. You're gonna notice there's six plates of engine oil cooler in there. That's what came on the unit originally. Six plates of cooling for your engine. On the AP brand, you're gonna notice four plates of aluminum. Not six plates of stainless steel, but four plates of aluminum, so less cooling. On the BP brand, you're gonna notice two plates. Not six, not five, not four, not three, but two plates of cooling. On the economy, they've gone to a concentric aluminum cooler. A concentric aluminum cooler. Not a two plate, not a four plate, not even close to a six plate. Now, what do you want in your car? Are you towing an RV? Are you towing a boat? Or do you have this car loaded full of kids going to a soccer tournament? What do you want to depend on?